Welcome to part four, the final part of my Rob Roy engine build. And I do hope that you have enjoyed this series of videos. I've built a few engines over the last couple of years, but this is the first one that I have documented as the build progressed. In this video, there are a few odds and ends to tidy up and the engine will be complete. The first of which was to add some fluting around the cylinder gland nut, mainly to provide slots in which I can fit a spanner to nip up the nut should it require it whilst running. So the nut was fixed in the jaws of my rotary indexer and I simply used the 24 hole dividing plate and indexed six divisions for the slots. As you can see, this not only provides a useful finger grip, but adds a stylized look to the nut, and the slots are ideally suited to fit this small micrometer C-spanner for adjustment whilst it's running. The next job was to make some little brass oil cups to fit to the main bearings, and an oiler for the eccentric strap. So some brass hex bar was turned down in the lathe and then threaded to M4. The stock was then centre drilled and a 2mm drill bit used to drill a through hole for the oil passageway, taking gentle cuts and retracting and clearing the chips regularly. This was then chamfered and a thread relief cut to allow the oiler to be fully inserted into the tapped hole. This was then parted off in readiness to be flipped around in the chuck for machining the oil cup shape. The thread was protected with a wrap of drawing paper and gently held in the six jaw chuck. The top slide compound was set to an angle of about six degrees and progressive cuts were then made to form the conical shape of the cup until the hex profile was turned away. This was then drilled out using the countersunk profile of a centre drill to form the internal funnel and an oil reservoir. And then the edges were touched up with a file and polished up with a scotch pad. Holes were drilled and tapped into the supports and through the bronze bearings and the oil cups were screwed into place and gently nipped up with a spanner. The conical profile nicely complements the angles of the supports and the chassis of the engine. The cast cylinder and flywheel were cleaned up and prepped for painting and first sprayed with primer and then red and green paint was applied using double acrylic spray paint. For the base which the engine sits on, I wanted to break the angular edges to a softer radius. So this went back to the mill and using a woodworking router bit, I carefully removed the corners to create the radius. This was then polished up with a scotch pad to remove any machining marks left by the cutter, but on the whole, it worked surprisingly well. The engine was now ready to be built up from the parts using mostly metric stainless steel socket head cap screws. I found a supplier of half head screws as I felt these looked neater than the full size heads. I made my own screws for the connection of the moving parts as these required a smooth bearing surface. The eccentric and valve rod components were now assembled 
using 2mm cap screws and the clevis joint was firmly fixed to the other end using locking compound. As mentioned in the last video, the valve block was remade to correct my error and I also modified the stem connection to the valve nut by using a 1mm grub screw to lock it in position as using the threaded rod to adjust the valve position was an awkward operation when assembled. The valve was fitted into the steam chest and the rod assembled via the keeper guide and the eccentric slid onto the crankshaft and connected with the valve stem. The valve was positioned centrally over the port face in readiness to set up the timing of the eccentric throw. Here you can see the finished valve rod keeper, which was remachined to a more pleasing shape, with a central radius around the stem, which was simply formed using my vertical belt sander. The piston and rod was installed into the cylinder and connected to the crosshead, and then the valve timing was adjusted and set. The flywheel was finally assembled and the engine was now oiled up and connected to my air supply. The engine requires some running in as I can still feel a few areas of slight resistance, especially in this area here just as the upward stroke begins. This will probably work itself free once a few hours have been put on the engine. Anyway, I think it's time for me to stop rattling for a while and let the engine do the talking from now on.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. For me, it's been a fun build. And the final engine wasn't too dissimilar from my original wooden model. I must say, I think this process works well for me, rather than getting bogged down with making drawings or trying to use CAD. My next little engine project is to make another variation on my wigwag wobbler engine, which I built earlier this year. This one, again mocked up in wood, is a twin cylinder V engine, which is essentially the same design as the wigwag, but with twin cylinders instead of just one. So keep a lookout for a video on this in the near future. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you continue to watch and enjoy my videos. I also love reading the comments from you all, so please do write and let me know your thoughts. It would be a lonely hobby without you guys and girls. And as always, thanks for watching.